Section 5.3, the last lesson we're going to cover before our test on Friday. Today is the 29th. We are going to be working with division today. We're going to be dividing polynomials by monomials, which is really very easy. And then we're going to start dividing two polynomials. Now, there are two methods that can be used. You can use long division and you can use synthetic division. In the past, I've spent a week stumbling and struggling to get long division. And then I spent a day teaching synthetic and everybody says, why didn't you teach that in the first place? So this year, since they both give us the same answer, we're going to try just using synthetic division. And if there's a problem, we'll go back. Okay. But right now I want to show you using numbers instead of letters what the rule is when you're dividing a polynomial, which means more than one term, by a monomial. And the reason I'm using numbers is we know what that answer is. Figure that out. Somebody tell me, what is that? The answer is 6. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 6 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. We know that for a fact. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you what a common mistake is. What is this? Okay. A common mistake that's made when you have nothing but letters up there is that you will see, hmm, these two are exactly the same. Since it's division, I'm just going to cancel them out, and there's my answer. But we know the answer is 6, and that's not 6, is it? That's 10. So to simply cancel one thing out is not going to work. So how do we do it? Each one of those terms is being divided by 2. If I take the three terms and divide each one of them by 2, tell me, Parker, what do I get now? 6. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And now I have the correct answer. Okay? So now when I stick letters in there, does that mean that all the rules change? No. This is the way we divide polynomials by monomials. Okay. So in this case, now let's put letters. We've got a plus a squared plus a cubed divided by a. Common mistake, somebody's going to want to just cross out these a's and say, okay, there you go, there's my answer. But we know from what I just showed you that that's not right. In actuality, each one of these terms are being divided by A. Now, do you have to write everything out on your paper like this? No, but I'm writing it out because I want to make sure everybody sees exactly what we're doing. We are dividing every term by A. Well, here, what is A over A? 1. And what's A squared divided by A? A. And what's a cubed divided by a? A squared. Okay. That is the correct answer. Not a squared plus a cubed. Because we simply crossed out the a's. Alright, now let's get a little bit more difficult. You may say, ooh, that's a lot more difficult. Alright, I'm going to have students who are going to want to just cross out the fours, Cross out an X somewhere and cross out a Y somewhere and say, hey, call it a day. But that is not correct. The correct thing is that each one of these terms is being divided by 4XY. In this case, it's a good idea to write it all out because we got a lot involved here. And now I focus on each term individually, and I work within that one, and I do my canceling and my reducing. <clears throat> so, John, what is 4 divided by 4? 1. And what is x cubed divided by x? x squared. And what is y squared divided by y? y. 
So this first fraction reduces to x squared y. The second fraction, what's 8 divided by 4? Clint? X divided by x is 1. Okay? Don't say nothing because we're going to get confused and put a 0 if that's all we have left. But 2 times 1 is 2, so I don't have to put it. And then y squared divided by y is y. What if you do put it? If you put times 1, make sure you put 2 times 1 and not just 2 1 because that's 21. All right, and then I have 12 divided by 4. x squared divided by x, James. Oh, x. Thank you. And y cubed divided by y, y squared. Then you just need to check it out and make sure that's nothing that can be added together. What about the first and the last term? Can they be combined? Why not? Why they have the same letters. Different. Different powers. X is squared here. Y is squared here. Okay, has to be same letters, same powers. So that's your final answer. Box it off and move on. All right, pretty simple. Any questions on this before we move on to synthetic division? Okay. Synthetic division is used when we are dividing a polynomial by another polynomial. All right? Everybody needs to write these rules down. These are the rules that have to be followed when you are using synthetic division. First thing is that in both your divisor and your dividend, your variables must be in descending order, meaning the exponents of the variables. Notice in the example, just put it back right there, baby. Thank you. Notice in the example, I've got x cubed, x squared, x to the first power, and then I could say x to the zero power because there is no x. All right? Once you make sure they're in descending order, you've got to make sure that all of those are present. And if they're not, you've got to make room. Room. Every year, people laugh at me because the way I say room. Room. Oh, look, he found another word he can make fun of me, and I don't even say it. <laughs> For the missing variable. And I'll show you. We'll work an example where that happens. But right now, I just want you to make write that down. It'll make sense in a few minutes. So before we can even start working with synthetic division, we have to get our affairs in order and make sure that everything's right. Okay? Can I flip the slide? Anybody say no? Okay. I'm waiting on Caleb back there. What's the other way to do it? Long division. It takes a whole page. This takes about this much. Okay. This is the example of making room for the missing variables. Notice, if this was my dividend right here, okay, I have x squared, excuse me, I have x cubed and I jump straight to x to the first power. Well, I've got to create a space for that x squared term because it's going to show up. All right, it's like somebody who crashes a party. You don't invite them, but they show up anyway. Okay, so I rewrite it, or in my mind I rewrite it, just inserting an x squared term. But since it's really not there, I put a coefficient of zero. Because now it's just empty space. Okay? And the third thing is that your divisor must have a leading coefficient of 1. Now, okay. after the last test, we all learned what a coefficient was. It's the number in front of the variable. Okay? If it's the leading coefficient, which one do you think it is? The first one. What if it's... 